Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead and today I'm in an outdoor kitchen. It is a glorious day. It's that perfect fall day in October. It's not too hot, not too cold, a little bit of a breeze and it's just beautiful. So I thought I'd like to join you guys and I want to talk about the three, I guess, top questions, biggest questions that I get about fermenting. Now, fermenting is, has been my, I guess, number one way to preserve our harvest here on the homestead because when you ferment something, you're gonna keep it in its most natural form. It's gonna keep all the natural nutrients, the enzymes and the vitamins intact. And believe it or not, when you ferment something, it increases the nutritional value. Did you guys know that um, if you had to pick any food, which food would have the highest amount of vitamin C, what do you guys think it would be? What do you think it is? It's not oranges, it's not lemons, it's not red peppers, sweet red peppers. It is fermented cabbage or sauerkraut. It is loaded in vitamin C. So by fermenting, it increases the nutritional value. It's great for your digestion and gives you energy. So I started fermenting everything. So fermenting is the way to go for us here on our homestead. Now the first question that we get asked a lot is when I get my ferments done and I put it in cold storage, either a refrigerator or a root cellar or down in a cool basement, what do I do with it? Well, that's what's the cool thing about it. There's so many ways you can, you know, come up with ideas to use your ferments. So let's see, here's some peppers that I fermented. So what I'll do is, maybe you don't want to chop up a bunch of stuff for a salad, so what I'll go ahead and do is I'll put my little mixture, I have carrots and onions and peppers in this ferment, and I'll just go ahead and mix it in with my salad, and then that way I don't have to worry about cutting up a lot of things. And I just put maybe two or three tablespoons in my salad and mix it up. Another way is here is some kimchi or some sauerkraut. So what I'll use this for, it's great to put on burgers or sandwiches. You might just want to have it as a side with something. You can use it as a topping on a taco. So sa sauerkraut and kimchi, you can use so much. I love it especially. It's probably one of my favorite ways to eat it. I eat it in the morning with my eggs and toast. So that's something you can do with that. And of course, you guys all know how to eat pickles. Those are wonderful just to eat by themselves. And here's one that I like to make a lot are jalapenos. Jalapenos are so simple and they're great. They taste just like the kind you buy at the store in the can. You can use them as topping on your sandwiches. They're great on hamburgers. You can put them on pizzas. They work out great. And let's see, I also have, here's some cauliflower, so just a mixture. Sometimes if you just want a snack, I'll just munch on a couple of these. And the great thing about the carrot part of it, kids love the fermented carrots. So I know with our grandkids, it's their favorite thing to eat. They love the carrots. So the moral of the story is not to eat too much. You don't want to sit there and eat the whole jar because it is a probiotic food, which is good for your digestion. We've had some people contact us and said it was so good, the ferment was so good, we ate the whole jar, but then later that night they were very bloaty. <laughs> so just be careful, you only need a little bit and it works out great because you know I, you take off all this time, you're chopping it up, putting it in there, and uh, you know it will go a long way. So when you make things in half gallon jars, this thing of sauerkraut is gonna last me a very long time because I'm not gonna to sit and eat the whole thing and you pack it in there so well. Now the second question that I get, this one probably I get the most, is what is this white stuff on top of my ferment? So I want to show you what it looks like. So this is what they call calm yeast, K-A-H-M. And it's just a harmless yeast, it will not hurt you. I know some people just stir it up in their ferments. I don't like to do that. So generally what I'll do is I just get a paper towel or towel and I just will kind of wipe the edges off, kind of blot it a little bit, like so. And then I'll just kind of mix it up a little bit in there. So that's the common yeast, and it is harmless. And generally, people are like, "Well, what causes it?" You know, oxygen is going to cause things to happen. So you know, you might there can get be a little oxygen in there. That's okay. But then we have the other thing, which is mold. You can get green or black mold on something. So let me see. I had one that I wanted to show you. So this one here. 
doesn't look very appetizing and it also doesn't smell good. So that is a big determinant when you are making a ferment is your nose. If it smells good, it's generally going to be good. So your nose will tell you a lot. So when I smell this, this just doesn't smell right. It smells kind of icky. So I know this is definitely a bad ferment. So I'm going to just dump this and I'm not going to use this one. Now, there are so many people that are so afraid to ferment because they're like, I'm going to get botulism. There has not been any reported cases of botulism when it comes to fermenting. You get that in canning. What happens is when you are fermenting, you're using salt and it's going to be put in an um, anaerobic container because you don't have any oxygen. It's without oxygen and it becomes very acidic. And so botulism isn't going to be able to survive in a very acidic environment like your ferment. So that's why eating a ferment is, it is very safe. So I always say, listen to your, or listen to your nose. It, it knows, it'll, it'll let you know if it tastes good or if it's bad. And if it doesn't smell right, then it's not right. And then where there's doubt, just throw it out guys, right? So if you have that green or black mold on there, you know, get rid of it. So the third most often asked question that we get is, how long does my ferment last? So generally, you know, anywhere, it depends on the ferments. If it's something that has more sugar in it, like your fruits, three months, then we go to six months to possibly to a year, just as long as you're keeping it in cold storage in a refrigerator or root cellar or a very, you know, cool basement. And then that way, that's how it will help us when we're preserving our harvest here. It'll get us from one season to the next season. I even have, let's see, a lot of my salsas, I have salsas that are a year old and I open them up and they are they still smell good and they'll be great and we'll have them for taco night. I'll use this one tonight when we have taco night at our house with the grandkids. A lot of the ferments, let's say they don't make it six months. It might be possibly that you ate it <laughs> and that's usually what happens with us. We eat it before the, it's time or maybe the salt ratio wasn't enough for it and maybe that's what had it turn you know, anaerobic or maybe something you know possibly got in it that could contaminate it. Don't, when you are eating your ferments, here's a quick little note. Let's say I have my fork. I'm gonna open up my ferment and I'm gonna eat my ferment. Don't eat it, the bacteria in your mouth, and then stick your fork back into your ferment because you can contaminate it. So you're just gonna use your fork the first time or maybe put some in your plate and eat from there. Do not eat from the same um, container. And generally when I'm eating mine, I always wipe, wipe it down to make sure there's nothing on the outside edge just to be safe. And then I'll put it back into cold storage. But those ferments are gonna last a long time. I was amazed when I first started fermenting. You know, you're, you're scared your first time, and I know a lot of you guys are too. You kind of get nervous. It's like, oh my gosh, am I gonna kill myself? But you know, you, you aren't. I mean, it's just amazing all the things that you can do, and you can be so creative in the different ferments using different herbs and adding different flavors. And then when you do it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And then you can kind of elaborate and keep going into more and more um, different types that you could eat. But just know, six months to a year, you could keep these um, you know, in cold storage and they'll be awesome. So I answer to the three most often asked questions about fermenting. And so what I thought I'd like to do with you guys today is make a really easy ferment that let's say you haven't started fermenting. Maybe you clicked on this video and you've never fermented, you're kind of nervous and you want to know about it. This is a great one to start with because everyone loves it. I don't think I have given this ferment to anybody who has not liked it. And especially kids, they love it. I know my grandkids are like, can I have another one? Can I have another one? Can I have another one? And they love it and they're just fun. Like the other day I even gave it to Doug. He had to you know, go on a little road trip and I gave him a jar of this to take with him and then you can just kind of munch on it. And that is carrot sticks. And all you're gonna need is a little dill and some garlic and some salt and some water and some carrots and it's easy. So what I have done now is I have just sliced up my little carrots like so and I'm gonna put them today in my sanitized pint jars. I just use boiling water and then I just pour it over them and then that way I'll sanitize them. And then here's my jar. And I'm gonna put some fresh dill from the garden and I always say there's nothing better like fresh, fresh dill. It smells so good, it's heavenly. So you put your dill in there and I'm just gonna arrange my little carrot sticks in here. That's probably the hardest thing about making this ferment is arranging your carrots in the proper order. So you're gonna put it in there and load them up really good. And this is a 
great thing, you know, if your kids need a snack, you're on a picnic, this is a great ferment to take with you. And it does ride well in the car. So I'm gonna fill this up. And don't forget the garlic, because the garlic just gives it that great flavor. So I just, I'm gonna put probably two cloves in each one, and I'm gonna cut them in half. Because, and don't forget, here's another question. A lot of people do those condiment little things in there, they'll put um, the garlic or onions, and a lot of times people don't eat them. The garlic is excellent, and it really cuts down the bite. So when you ferment garlic, and that's another one. I love to ferment garlic and onions, both of them, because it's great, because you can use it as a topping in place of how you'd use a fresh onion or fresh garlic. So the fermented garlic tastes amazing. You could eat a bunch of cloves and not even know you're you know, eating garlic. I'm gonna put a little bit more of my dill in there. There's a saying, butter makes it better, and then here, I love arugula, I say arugula makes it better. It's good, it's what's for dinner. So, dill here makes any ferment taste great. And then I'll do my last clove of garlic. So now what I'm gonna do is, I wanna make sure that I have an inch or inch and a half head space at the top. But what I'm gonna do is just get some of my carrots and cut them smaller in the top because I do have a little extra room. So headspace is when you look at your jar, and I'm gonna pour my brine in here in just a minute, you wanna have from the top of the jar to where the liquid is, about an inch, inch and a half head space because what's gonna happen when the fermentation process begins, you're gonna get these little bubbles that start coming up. You know, when you see like a fermented beverage, it gets kind of fizzy. So we don't want that to kind of ooze out of the top. So we wanna make sure that there is about an inch and a half or so head space at the top. So now what I'm gonna do is make a brine. My salt of choice here is Redmond Real Salt. I get it in bulk. We will have links below because if you guys aren't getting it in bulk, you don't know what you're missing, it's great, because I go through a lot of salt here. So for every pint, you're going to use two teaspoons of salt. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm only using about a half of a pint to put in there because I already have the carrots in there. So I put my two teaspoons of salt, my unrefined salt, and don't use like iodized salt or don't use table salt because it has anti-caking agents in it and different things that could really hinder your ferment, okay? So I have my salt in here. I'll mix it up. And then I'm gonna pour it over my ferment, my fermented carrot sticks with garlic and dill. And then I'm gonna need to put a fermenting weight on top of it to keep the vegetables underneath the brine because that's what's gonna protect it, keep it in that anaerobic state without any oxygen that will mess up your ferment. And then I'm gonna add my fermenting top that I get from Mason Top. And I like to use these because they come in packs of four and they're amazing because I ferment so much stuff. And there's a little hole at the top because what happens is it starts to ferment. It's gonna start building pressure in there and it's gonna let that pressure out through that little bitty hole. And then I go ahead and I put my ring on here. Now, if you don't have a fermenting top or a fermenting puck, you can still ferment. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, let's say I don't have the weight. Then you can use something that you are fermenting. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the carrots that I already had here. And then you can just kind of put them over the top to kind of push it over the brine, like so. And that'll keep, whoops, it popped out. So I put it down there. So I kind of made a little weight with the carrot sticks. push them down, and then that way it keeps everything underneath the water. Then, you'll use your flat, like so. I put that on top, and my ring, and you're gonna need to burp it. So what happens is it's building pressure. All you're gonna do every day is just to turn it a little bit, and you'll hear it go and the air will come out, and then just you can just turn it and close it, and then put it on a plate, and you wanna put it in a pantry somewhere, out of sunlight, and then generally a ferment, ferment, ferment's best between 65 and 72 degrees, so at room temperature is perfect. 
So what I'm gonna do with this ferment, I'll check it, you know, probably after a week or so. I'll taste it to see if it's to my liking. Generally with these carrots, I like let them go anywhere from 10 to 14 days. When it's done, I'll go ahead. So let's say I had these carrots, I would take these little carrot sticks off that I had for my top. Or if I was using the weight, I would take the weight off. And then I would take the top off here. And then I'm gonna put my flat on. Put it in the refrigerator or cold storage in the root cellar or a cool, cool basement. And then that way I would use it when I'm ready. So if I want a snack or if my grandkids want one of these because it's their favorite thing, they come home and they ask for it all the time, then I would give them one of these. So fermenting is so simple and easy. So if you guys are watching this video and you've never fermented before, this would be a great way to start. Go ahead and try to do some carrots. It's easy, easy, easy. And give it a try. And leave a comment below if you guys have never fermented below and that you are going to try. I would love to hear from you or if you've been fermenting maybe give me some ideas maybe that I haven't fermented some good mixes together maybe basil with something or just give me some ideas what you guys think are good ferments other than that you guys if you have not heard we are giving away a log cabin so the links will be below check it out register um, we're trying to get a goal of a million subscribers so Get on board, share these videos in social media because we really want to give this log cabin away to you guys. So keep fermenting and I will look forward to seeing you guys really soon on our next video. See you later. Bye.